for my first piece, I have it with me. So, this piece is called Ephemeral Youth, but fun fact, in most of my college art portfolios and supplementals, I spelled ephemeral wrong. But there's an even funnier story behind this, or the origin of this piece. But it's kind of long, so I don't blame you if you skip it. Okay, so I said I quit art lessons before high school, but freshman and sophomore winter break, I showed up to this art studio and every day I'd grind for like four hours on this one piece the entire winter break. Anyways, so I made this my sophomore winter break and I submitted it to Scholastics and it had like an extra frame and it had these glasses and some lights and it didn't win anything. So my junior year, winter break, I had these flowers. They're not actually these flowers, later story. So I had these flowers that my mom gave me for my birthday that kind of looked like those, except they were like rotting because they didn't dry. They were just dead flowers. So I put them on the, the, the base and I just took a picture and I submitted it and it won a scholastic gold key at the regional level. So I was like, great. But the story doesn't end here. Stay tuned for part two. Okay, so this is my second piece. And for my second submission to the Rhode Island School of Design, you'd think it'd be a little different, right? Psych. I submitted the same thing, only the, the base version. And my reasoning and tip one behind this is I spent a whole winter break making this hyper realistic and beautiful. So I really wanted the admissions officer to see how much detail I put into it. So that's why I gave it its own slide. Okay, part two of the story. So after you win a regional scholastic gold key, they have this exhibition. And so I had to bring this piece to the exhibition, but my flowers were in the trash, long gone in the dumpster somewhere. So we had to buy new pink roses from Costco. We had to let them dry. And then by that time, the flowers were so like flaky that the leaves would fall off. So I had to mod podge each flower and dunk it in and then I glued it on like the pro that I am. So here we are today. On to my third piece. So this is my third piece, Jungle Hide and Seek, because if you look closely, there's a face hidden in it. This is one of my many pieces of my AP art concentration that I just snuck in there. I love making collages with random materials. So this idea started when I was just painting randomly on a piece of scrap paper and I was like, it kind of looks like a face. So the rest of the face wasn't looking too hot. So I painted some scraps of canvas and cut it up like those fringe tutorials and the DIY duct tape videos, but that's for another time. So I added all the layers and it started to look quite jungly. So this is the final product. My process is quite organic, but I think whatever, what works works. Um, the reason why I included this piece so early in my portfolio is because when I had um, people review it from National Portfolio Day, they all seemed to say that this was one of my stronger pieces. So I listened to their advice and I put it basically first. Okay. On to piece four out of 20. Haha, <laughs> 420, blaze it. So the process behind this piece is also quite random. I was in my school's eighth period art club and I started painting this red dinosaur. And so it was there, this dinosaur, and my friend was making fun of it. So I started adding all these leaves around it and eventually the leaves covered up the dinosaur so no one could really see it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna outline some of these leaves. And then I was like, oh, they kind of look like butterflies. So then I just called it the butterfly effect and here we are. So this leads into tip two, which is to submit as much as you possibly can to the Scholastic Art and Writing Competition. This piece was so random, yet when I submitted it, it got a silver key. So I was like, whatever. So here we are, that's the piece. On to piece five. So this piece is called Looking Forward, Looking Backwards, and I put periods behind each statement to make it more edgy. Um, this is the piece from my freshman year winter break where I grinded every day for it. And before you think this to yourself in your head, I know the girl on the left is looking really rough. Okay, I know, I know, you don't need to think it. Okay, I submitted this piece because one, I needed more pieces that were not paintings, oops, and two, because I needed more pieces that did not just have the main subject right in the center of the piece, 
which I had for basically everything else and I didn't really notice it, but since I noticed it, I had to make a conscious effort to fix that. So this is the only piece I had that could try to break it up. And then tip three, this piece was important because I needed to have that variation in my mediums and compositions and color schemes. So that's something to definitely keep in mind when submitting your art portfolio. On to piece six. So this piece is called Lombard Street Window and I copied it off of a calendar page that I actually have. One second. So I included this piece in my portfolio because otherwise my portfolio was just a bunch of people's faces and I needed to sell RISD that I had mediocre talent in other areas such as a landscape. Tip four, duh, have variation in the types of art that you create, aka not me. So portraits, landscapes, still lifes, blah, blah, blah. Clearly I sucked at that, but I tried my best to present somewhat a diverse portfolio that highlighted my strengths, facial manipulation, with too little time and energy to create more pieces. Piece seven. This is the first concentration piece that I made for AP Art, and it has an acrylic base with ink and pen outlines and silver nail polish. To tell you the truth, I didn't really have an AP, con AP Art concentration. I basically just drew a bunch of faces and then I didn't like some of the proportions, so I just covered up. As you can see here, you can kind of see the guy's face, but I didn't really like enough of the rest of it, so I just covered the rest up with noodles. But and this leads me into tip five, that you should write fancy. Although my idea behind this was a guy drowning in noodles, in my AP art concentration, I wrote, and I quote, <clears throat> chaos, pandemonium, entropy, and the tumultuous juxtapositions between cultural and fundamental traditions and modern day reinterpretations it is difficult to see the truth. However, mess can be beautiful, and the human eye is drawn to enigmas. My pieces are composed around the layers, the characteristics, and the chaotic traits that make us human. Thank you. Piece number eight. This piece is called Beaded Pope, and I'm not really a fan of this piece, to be honest. This is one of the last pieces I made for my AP art concentration, and you can tell. Um, I really, in particular, don't like the way that I did the Pope's face. Also, I probably hot glued at least a tub full of beads onto that sheet of paper, but between the beads, the hat made out of red string, and this charcoal paper that I put under my hand when I was doing charcoal so my hand wouldn't smudge the piece, I thought the piece looked pretty cool overall, even though I didn't really like that one particular aspect but whatever. Piece number nine. It's time for Who's That YouTuber? Lol, it's Haley Fam. From this Instagram post, uh, this was for my AP art final, and the assignment was just to paint on a piece of wood. And as you can see, not to flex, but I got an A. It's very small. I did this quite last minute, but the big whiteout paint really pulled through. And I added this piece because at National Portfolio Day, one of the main critiques that I got was my portfolio has a very dark color scheme and I needed to add more bright colors. And this piece was one of the brightest that I had, so I threw it in. Um, so tip six, make sure you have a variety of colors. Don't do what I do. And tip seven is to try using a big whiteout pen. It is so fun. Piece 10, halfway there. This piece is called Follow the Dragon. And I took the reference photo for this in a 2018 winter break trip to Key West where there's chickens. And on the front of this shirt is a puff painted chicken and I really like the shirt. Anyways, I added the dragon on a whim with some red paint that I found in the classroom and it reminded me of like the Chinese paper cutting dragons so I thought that was pretty cool. So tip eight is don't be afraid to try new things. Like when I was painting this I noticed that it was getting pretty bland so adding in this bright color really 
freshened everything up and the paper cut dragon addition also made the piece look more interesting as a whole. And I got that colorful thing going. Number 11 out of 20 was a piece from my sketchbook and this is what I noticed from other RISD videos is in addition to putting completed completed pieces you could also put pieces from your sketchbook to show your process although this one doesn't really show my process but whatever. This is the piece. It's called Good Fortune. Get it? Because it's like the cat that goes like this. Yeah, I don't have much to say about it other than it brought something new to my portfolio and it wasn't a face, so that's a plus. The next piece is called Bread Hands and I don't really like this piece, but once again, I needed more pieces with a subject not directly in the center and I thought one sketch is better than no sketch. If you look at the arms, they're supposed to be a baguette, and the hands are supposed to be holding pieces of grain, but I get it if you don't really see it, because me too. Tip nine, please don't be me and take your photos with nice lighting. Like, come on, what is this lighting? I'm so sorry. Outdoors is always a good place to take photos, just don't do this, this is so bad. Number 13 is called Face Pond, and it's like this big. Um, tip 10 is don't be afraid to take big up-close pictures of really small tiny pieces. Anyways, for this piece, I think if it wasn't painted on the non-stick baking sheet paper and that I didn't add the ducks on it, it would be too cliche to submit because if you google like girl hidden bathtub Pinterest, you'll find like 50 of these and I'm pretty sure that's not what art schools are looking for. So I was hoping that adding the ducks would be like, oh, she's so quirky, she can add something else to it. Yeah, but I'm not really sure it worked out. I just needed stuff with more color and I thought this one was kind of cool. Number 14 out of 20 is called Aged Prayer and you can actually see it up there in the corner. Yeah, I'm kind of stupid, but my hobbies is drawing people with wrinkles. So I found this old lady praying online and I drew her in charcoal but this image is kind of popular, so I would not recommend you copying something directly off online unless you make super major changes to it, which I did not. So please learn from me and don't be stupid. Number 15 out of 20, 75% done. So is this piece, which you can see here. Now, you may be thinking, who modeled this beautiful face? I mean, she's gorgeous. Me. My mom hates this piece with a passion, but yes, I did hyper-realistically spend nine hours drawing myself yawning. I added the sticks in this submission because I was trying to emulate that granny energy that would win that Scholastic Gold Key when I submitted it to Scholastics again the following year, but Scholastics didn't like it this time, so... 16 out of 20 is another sketchbook piece. And yes, I did title it with an emoticon. Piece 17. As we were nearing the end of my portfolio, I really wanted to put some of my strongest pieces at the end so I could start strong and end strong. This piece is called Thread of Thoughts, and it was fun and quite painful to make. So I first had a quarter life crisis at 2 a.m. while having leftover black and blue paint. So I found a random piece of cardstock and I painted it. Later, in art class, I found a picture of a girl crying, puffy dyed on Pinterest, so I threw that in too, and that's her. And finally, I decided I really wanted to torture myself, so I took this tiny needle and random embroidery thread and I poked a ton of holes. I thought the end result looked pretty cool though. 18 out of 20, are you ready? So, this isn't even art. Each student at my high school has to create a robot for their freshman year project, and this is mine. I entered for beauty and I made a dabbing crow. See? Yeah? Once again, the representatives at National Portfolio Day really seem to like this one, so I put it where it would be strongest. For my second to last piece, drumroll please. Mondrian. Mondrian portrait. I randomly made this during my junior year winter break, and most people can't really tell it's a person, but if you look closely, 
This is their lips, nose, hand, and they're going like... The rectangles are kind of fun to make too. For the longest time, I was kind of miffed about the colors and the uneven rectangle sizes, but then I got over it. So somehow it landed in the second to last position. And now for my last piece. This piece is called Three in the Sun, and this is the only new piece that I actually created other than the two RISD prompts for my RISD and art school application process. To compensate for my drab and uncolorful color scheme in the rest of my pieces, I made this one extra colorful. It's kind of crazy and experimental and doesn't really make much sense, but I am a big fan of the giant egg on the top and the zebra stripes. I wanted to end somewhat experimental and crazy and abstract and in a style that I never really did anywhere in the portfolio. So maybe if the RISD admissions officers didn't think I had any talent in the beginning, maybe they changed their mind when they saw this, but I don't know. And now for the RISD assignment, the prompt. Begin by observing a phenomenon or choosing an object in the natural world. Create a visual reaction to this object or phenomenon. You may use any medium and work at any scale. Document this work and upload it as your first response. So, there's a whole story here. Due to my poor time management, I started my RISD application a couple nights before the application was due. Per most of my pieces, I began and worked pretty sporadically. At first, I was thinking about doing something influenza related. So I looked and I found my inspiration. This rubber chicken my brother bought in Chicago. I thought it'd be kind of funny to do the chicken pox. So I tried to make a chicken emerging from the rubber chicken's mouth and put a bunch of tiny circles around it. Once again, to compensate for my darker toned portfolio, I made this piece very bright and colorful. Moving on to the second part, which is just to change the first one, which was great for me. Instead of wasting time that I did not have to copy the first piece to make the second, I had the idea to destroy the first piece and cut it open and then stitch it back together and call that the second piece. How evolutionary of me, oh my gosh. So here we are. At 12 a.m. one night, I cut some holes in the canvas and started to stitch it back up with this green embroidery thread. When I finally finished, it was 2 a.m. and I thought that the best way to show these cutouts would be to place a light source behind it and then take a picture in the darkness. And that's what I did. I went to my house's pitch black stairwell, placed my iPhone underneath the canvas, and took this HD high quality resolution picture with an iPad. And that was it, Evolution 1.0 and 2.0. wrap up this video, I hope that it has been helpful and has given you the motivation to take a risk. If a girl who messed up the dimensions of all her art pieces for at least half of her art portfolios and only had pieces from junior year and before to work with can get into RISD, you can certainly manifest your dreams. Although this is my first video, I hope that you'll stay with me. I plan to upload more art content and stories and document my life as a soon-to-be Princeton College student. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Like and subscribe. JK, JK. Unless... Bye!